All right, let's look at this problem. <clears throat> uh, 10 kilogram block is held in place on a smooth inclined plane uh, by the stop block at A. If a 10 gram bullet is traveling 300 meters per second, when it becomes embedded in the 10 kilogram block, determine the distance the block will slide up along the plane before momentarily stopping. All right, so do you see that this is a collision? This is a conservation of momentum problem. All right, so conservation of momentum, but that's just, just before and just after the collision. So it's not going to tell us what's happening after it starts sliding up and then it, it slides up as far as it can go. Um, it's just going to tell us what's happening right before the bullet enters and right you know, after the bullet has become embedded in there. All right, so conservation momentum, uh, MV of the bullet and the MV of the block plus the integral FDT, any impulse, any external impulse, outside impulse, um, equals M, I'm going to go ahead and put M plus M because they're going to be moving together with one velocity. So this would be the M of, we'll call it the projectile, velocity of the projectile, the M of the block, velocity of the block, then the projectile and the block are moving together with some velocity. So I'm going to take my whole system to be both the bullet and the block. So there is an impulse of the bullet on the block, but there's an equal and opposite impulse of the block on the bullet. That impulse between the two is an internal, so it wouldn't show up in my equation. But there is something else that has an outside impulse, uh, and that would be the incline. This, the ground, you imagine if the bullet pushes the block on the ground, it's going to want to kind of go into the incline a little bit. That incline is going to push it back with some impulse. So there is an impulse uh, of the incline on the block, an external, which would be right here. Think about direction. Now, this equation needs directions. You know, this I, I'm I, I am going to separate this into an x equation and a y equation. What should I choose as my axes? What should I choose as my axes? Maybe maybe I could keep the usual x y because that velocity is going right there. But you know, afterwards the the velocity will be going in that direction. Maybe I choose that direction. Also, what about this impulse is, is going to be in that direction. Um, I think it makes the most sense to choose my axes as I'll call that X and that Y. All right, so I'm going to have an X conservation momentum equation. Let me leave a little bit of space. And I'm going to have a Y, MV plus MV plus integral f dt equals m plus m, both of those moving with the same velocity. This is going to be velocity in x, this will be velocity in y. This is, you know, all of this is x, x, x. All of this is y, m, p, v, p, mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet, p, b. This is in the y direction. Okay. I'm calling this the x direction. So there is no external impulse uh, in the x direction. Okay. Also, uh, the, the block was stationary before the bullet, before the collision. Okay. So now let me look. Look at this x equation right there. The all right, but uh, this 300 meters per second is not in the x direction. Uh, let me think about what, you know, sine and cosine. I'm, I'm going to kind of make this Z. If this is 30 degrees, this is 30 degrees. So uh, this component and that component, right? This component would be 300 cosine 30. This would be 300 sine 30, right? So mass of the bullet, the projectile. 0.01, the velocity in this x direction, 300 cosine 30. That's the only thing I have on the left-hand side of my equation. 
equals the mass of them together, 10 plus 0.01 times the velocity of them together in the x direction. And there, I would get velocity in the x direction is 0.2595 meters per second. You know, it's up the incline. Okay, now knowing that, then maybe I can figure out and answer the question how, you know, th what distance will it slide up there uh, before it comes to rest, okay? Uh, you don't have to it, because it doesn't ask for it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look at the y um, direction, this y equation. So what is happening in the y? I would argue there is an impulse, the, the way that I work out these problems, there is an impulse in the y direction of the ground uh, pushing on the block and um, the block and bullet. What about this velocity after the collision? Uh, it, assuming that it, sh it doesn't embed into the incline, uh, it's just going up all in the x direction. So, so I would say there's zero, there's no velocity in the y final. Okay, so the left-hand side of my equation right here, mass of the projectile, 0 0.01, velocity of the projectile, 300 sine 30, but let me be careful. Direction really matters. I'm calling this y up, but this, this velocity right here has a downward component downward, you know, if I ro rotate my axes along the incline. So this is negative right there, plus the impulse. I'll just leave it integral f dt equals zero. And so then I would get the impulse, if it had asked for um, this, take the other, other side, 1.5. Uh, the units for an impulse is it's really force times time. If my force is in newtons, my time is in seconds. I'm going to call it newton seconds. Uh, but we, it, it's also you know um, kilogram meters per second. Okay, but let's answer the question: How high up the incline does it go? So from it starts right here with a velocity of 0.2595 up the incline, what distance d does it slide until it gets a velocity of zero? I could do this a few different ways. I could look at a free body diagram. Um, I'm going to actually look at conservation of energy. Do you see now I can do conservation of energy? It's a smooth incline um, and there's no more collisions. So I'm going to do conservation of energy after the collision, conservation of energy, uh, V plus T plus any non-conserved work from 1 to 2 equals V plus T. V could be gravity and spring. V could be gravity and spring. Uh, and this, with this one, these are just magnitudes. Um, and most of my velocities, you know, I'm, I'm squaring it. Um, uh, but let, let me see here. All right, I'll, I'll just go ahead and write this whole thing out. Uh, just kind of my, uh, what I end up doing most of the time, MGH, one-half kx squared, one-half mv squared, any external force time distance equals mgh one half kx squared one half mv squared okay but obviously there's no spring zero zero uh, there are no external forces right there acting on it and it, no external forces that do work um, and it said it came to rest right there uh, I'm gonna say it starts at some zero height and so we're looking for this final height, uh, us saying that it starts with this velocity of 0.2595. All right, so one half the um, mass of 
10.1 kilograms. Velocity 0.2595 squared equals M 10.01, G 9.81, height H, and so I would get a height of point. 0.003433 meters or a height of 3.43 millimeters but that is in the vertical right the way we defined mgh that would be sorry that would be this height right here that height right there so um i don't know if the question was very clear but it asks for how far up the incline, along the incline. So we can just, you know, look at this uh, triangle. If this is 3.43 and this is 30 degrees, uh, and we're looking for D, what would we use? Sine, right? Sine of, I'll just do this real small right here. Sine of 30 is 3.43 over and so I would get a distance of 6.87 millimeters. That's the distance along the incline that it goes before uh, until it reaches a final velocity of zero.